Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. I have a very exciting opportunity for each of you. Imagine you are a solution architect and engaged by a forward-thinking digital company want to transform their digital landscape. Your task here is going to uh, design a real-time inference application. So it's simple, right? You need to have front end to receive requests from end user and talk to your inference endpoint oh, okay. and load the model files and generate output. Sounds simple. However, this is stable application because each user has different prompt, they generate different image. So we need to have three main challenges here. Yes. How you ensure the whole solution is reliable from front end to back end? <laughs> How are you going to ensure the end user don't wait too long for that image? How you can scale in and scale out your application on demand? Are you ready to take this journey with me? Awesome, awesome. I have a question, basically want to check you. I have two options. I have a pre-recorded demo, 100% will work. And I have a live demo, we together we take some risk. Show your hands if you want to do a live demo. Thank you. Surprise, all right, you are very brave. Let's take do a live demo. Basically what I'm going to do is show you this solution we already built for your reference. Okay, let's game on. So this is a stable diffusion we use that foundation model. I just probably use a very simple running prompt, a running horse. And then let's generate image. While we are waiting, I will explain, right? So this refresh pricing basically give you opportunity to use different type of instance type, like different size, different family, you can say the price, because this is very reliable, even for stable application, you can use spot instance, spot instance to save you money. Here we go, we already have image generated. We use G6E instance type, and we use two models here, can you see the difference? This one is stable diffusion, and another one is Flux, which is another popular foundation model. So this solution we already built. You can see some challenges we mentioned. We can easily switch model, flexible. We can ensure the whole environment can leverage different instance type and ensure you spot instance to provide reliability. Even a spot sometimes is not available. OK, let's switch back to our session. Uh, current point, I will show you how you exactly the technology behind. And then reliability. So in, in terms of reliability, we need to think about how you're going to architect the whole environment. Because this is safe application, we want to ensure in the event of failure of the back end or front end, you don't have impact to end user. So we chose to use the asynchronous model. What does that mean? The front end, you have end user on the left hand side, and send a request to API gateway, and then Lambda function will do the transformation of that message, validate the message, and send to uh, AWS SNS, simple notification service. From there, I will distribute the message to the queue as QS, simple queue service. So this whole process here, what it does is just receive a message from end user and put that in queue. That's the first half. It's done. The second half, you have message already in the queue, right? So if you follow me, look at the icon step one. Step one, I have a queue agent. This agent, I will pull the image, sorry, pull the message from that SQS, and then start to talk with SD Runtime. SD Runtime is an open source project called a Stable Diffusion 
web UI here as an inference endpoint to talk with my model file and do the inference work. When the image generated, it will be saved into the step two S3 bucket. Have we finished? Not yet, because you need to notify the user, hey, you send back to the uh, callback to the step three SNS. This is your message, the job completed. Right? This is whole stable connection finished. Eventually, if everything working perfectly, step four, it will delay that message from the queue. Can you see with the setup, right? Because we decouple these two phases. In the event of failure of the backend, for example, I have my inference endpoint have a failure. Don't worry. The message in the SQS queue is still there. The new task will come up to retry. So as you can see, even this is a stable application, I leverage the front end and the managed services, make my back end still stateless, right? You still run stateless containers on EKS. All right, so let's probably, from performance side, basically, again, we want to fast load these models, three steps. I want to quickly scale out my environment, add into the EKS environment. And I want to load the image quickly. I want to load model quickly, three steps. I will show you how to do that. So basically, this is a step we are going to take to load the model quickly in these three steps. And uh, uh, from a scalability perspective, what we are going to do is, in the event of the uh, significant traffic coming in, today, I only have a one node right, running one port. But it's not enough. We need to scale our environment, so we leverage the CADA, which is an open source mechanism to scale out the, my ports. Here, I have lots of tasks coming in. I have ports pending. We need backend resources here. I have Carpenter to scale up my nodes quickly to fulfill these ta uh, uh, jobs. So now you have port up running. So that's way how we quickly scaling out. Enough talking. I need to do a real demo here. And let's jump to my environment. So basically, I will show you how, how we set it up. So this is my EKS environment. This resource is already put in. Here, I have this uh, inference runtime running as a port and, and service. And here, there's a CADA to do the scaling. And Carpenter is a mechanism to scale out my backend EC2 instances. So having said that, how can we load our model file quickly? We need to jump into uh, some uh, these settings here. Go to the. Uh, this is the resources we already have, but what, what we need to uh, do a quickly testing is, can I start a new task, right? Generate a. a base, oh, by the way, I want to show you the the model files here. We already enabled the S3. CSI drivers here. You can see S3 already enabled that. Enable to, to use S3 bucket as a persistent volume. You can see the persistent volume is here. And I load all the model files into this bucket, right? Now let's probably switch to uh, here. I will start a job. Uh, what I will go going to do is uh, I will just quickly uh, start with one test. So here, Remember the picture we generated. I make some minor changes here, and uh, you will see the difference. Because the flexibility, we are able to uh, have uh, opportunity to have another model. For this image generation, we have foundation model, which is stable diffusion. LoRa is another extension model can work together, right? I still use the exactly same prompt, a very simple prompt, a horse running. But let's see what's the difference it's going to make. All right, this is going to send this um, prompt uh, to my API gateway, and then let's see the difference. Uh, I will go to my S3 bucket. That's where I have my image generated. All right, it's already there. And let's open. 
can you see the difference, right? Very different from the two pictures in the before. It's Chinese painting style because we use that Laurel model. All right. Uh, here we're talking about image generation, but how about uh, you running this in a large environment? There are many, many nodes, many, many requests come in. How can you ensure this environment can scale out quickly and also scale in while it's quiet to save your cost? So I need to simulate a testing, a low testing. Do you want to say how quickly we can scale out? If you want to say that? You want to say that? All right, cool. Um, OK, uh, I will generally load uh, a lot of uh, requests coming here. So what I will do uh, is going to uh, generate the load, but I need to start with this load testing. So basically, all right, load test. So this is uh, already starting. Uh, and then I want to go to my console here, right? Before, I, and then I'll just do, do a fresh. All right. Before I do a load testing, I want to show you the current current settings here, right? So basically, uh, this is a two. All right. This is a two environment. I want to show you the current nodes. Only one node, right? And let's make it. Uh, and this one, uh, I will do the. All right, only one port running. So let's start the skating. I will put five users here and then start. So while it's running, very soon, you can see some requests. It's going up, right? 17 more. And if you switch back to our console, let's see what's happening here. So lots of ports, right? It's pending. It's waiting for backend. And then from here, uh, we are going to show you some metrics. All right, it's pending here. So you can see the new nodes just brought up lots of backend new nodes to fulfill these ports. You can CPU is going to increase, but in that, when you get a new port up running, um, the CPU, new nodes up running, the CPU utilization will be reduced. Here we go. Um, and what I can show you is uh, in the back end, what's happening. This is our dashboard. Uh, so I just quickly show the last probably three minutes, and then I will do the refresh. So you can see the difference, right? Because we trigger that low testing, you can see this number going going up. When it's going up, reach to a threshold, the backend will trigger the scaling of my ports, and then uh, because you have lots of pending ports, right? I will trigger the nodes to fulfill that tasks, to fulfill that port. And then uh, if we go back to this environment, we already have lots of the nodes up running, right? So it's all running. And we have lots of backend nodes. So it's scaling very fast, you can see. And very soon, if you like, OK, can see it here because it's going up number of the messages to trigger the backend. So what we will do is we just stop, and very soon uh, you will say this whole environment will be scaled in to save your cost. So overall, this is how we set up the whole environment. What I want to show you is uh, basically the end-to-end -end visibility because uh, if you look at some testing here we just did uh, with the pickup one of them. 
So this is the end to end how it works, whole environment, right? We start with end user to send a request to the API gateway and then pass on to a Lambda to validate the message. Uh, and from here, uh, Lambda will pass on the, to the SNS and put in the queue. And after that, we'll start the agent will pull the image from the queue and finish inference. So this is a whole end-to-end -end, uh, environment, how it works. Uh, so let's probably quickly show you, switch back to our slides. So this is the whole environment already available for you. You can just go to this solution library. Half an hour, you deploy the whole, uh, whole stack. You can play with that. Uh, it also have details, the architecture decisions we made in this uh, solution. If you want to know more, these some sessions, so you can watch the re recording or focus on these sessions. I will cover some details tomorrow uh, around this uh, similar solution on ECS. And then, uh, if you want to continue learning this whole solution, how we, how we set the whole solution step by step, and also blog articles, so this is a URL, you can take a picture, uh, I already put a lot of links. You can easily just uh, look at, look for more details. Um, and uh, overall, uh, I think thank you very much for coming. Um, if you can do a survey, it would be much appreciated. So we can make the session better.